Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you're doing great. I am not. I do not have my stuff over here. But I am going to do a lesson about uh, paths. And this is actually the third time I've done this lesson, plus I did it at uh, jail ministry in 2019. But I was just, uh, I've just been thinking about paths and what path we're on and what path we need to be on according to God, not according to me, because I know nothing. According to God's Word, the path that we need to be on. Um, so I thought we would do it tonight. Um, it is an acrostic lesson. It's a P-A-T-H-F acrostic lesson, and uh, it has scripture in it. I may have to change some of the words because... Um, um, I said this was in 2019, that's so two years ago. Alright, I'm going to go get my Bible. I'll be right back. is on the phone. He left his phone and it was just ringing and ringing and ringing. And he said, why did you answer it? And I go, well, I was in the office. Why'd you leave it? Anyway. All right. Well, I hope you had an awesome day today. I you know many people are without power. And uh, I've been praying that it's so bad. It's so bad, but and we're just not used to it here in Texas. We're not used to this weather. This is not our weather at all. And so my prayer is that everybody gets their electricity on. I know we had a heat wave today. It got to be 21. And it's not going to be as cold as it was last night. So um, I'm hoping that power is restored. I know I spent today um, oops, I messed up my hair I spent today boiling water because we lost water last night we didn't have any water last night we still had electricity and I don't know how we have um, kept electricity I think we have a new power plant up here above our house but um, Anyway, we lost water last night, and so I kind of felt like I needed to boil water today. So I spent today boiling water and putting water away just in case we lose water again, just in case the electricity goes off again. We do have bottled water, but we really prefer tap water um, that's been filtered. So I took my filtered water and I boiled it. I don't know probably pretty stupid and a waste of time. I don't know, but I got me another mug tonight. It says coffee and cocoa. And I had some hot cocoa a while ago. I'm drinking water now. And I hope that I'm able to sleep tonight because I didn't sleep very well last night. My hip was hurting me last night. Most of the night I could not get comfortable on my right side, on my left side, or on my back. No three places were comfortable. So anyway, okay, well let's get into some prayer. And um, let's get into this lesson. And... Um, I hope that this lesson will touch somebody, will make somebody think. Um, I don't know. Alright, well let's pray. God, we just praise you and thank you. God, we just... Uh, we know that you're on your throne and we know that you're in control, God. We know that you are the great I am. You are the great Jehovah. God, we know that you will 
meet our needs, that you will provide for us. We thank you that you're our creator, our provider, our protector, our um, healer, our sustainer. God, you are the one true God. And like we talked about last night, your love is perfect, God. And you are kind and compassionate and loving and forgiving and faithful. But yet, God, you are coming as the righteous judge against all unrighteousness. God, we just pray. We just pray that you would help us to love more like Jesus does. That you would help us to have more compassion, God that you would just help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. God, we just pray. We just pray for the sick people. There are so many sick people, and I know this cold weather is not helping sick people at all. So God, just please provide a place for them to go where it is warm, where they can find shelter, where there is electricity. God, we just pray that soon the electric problem in this state and other states too, this is radiated into other states, God, we just pray that soon the electric company and all the energy uh, sources that we have will be thought out and will be able to be used. God, I don't believe that we were prepared for this because this is not our normal weather, but you know that, God. You know that. I don't believe there's anyone to blame for this. I think it's just a, a strange thing. But, God, we are just so thankful and grateful. And, God, again, we uh, pray for the families of people that are sick. And we just pray for um, electricity to come on for people. And we pray also, God, that um, many people will seek your faith through this, God. That many people will be drawn to Jesus. And we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for all the disasters. There's just so many, not just this storm, God. There's so many disasters. We just pray that these people would be drawn to you. God, that they would seek your face every day through your word and through prayer and through praise. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. Um, I just couldn't believe one that I saw today on YouTube, God. I just pray for this man, this man that just lost his wife suddenly, God. I just pray. I don't even know how she passed, God, but you do. I just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for this family, God. I don't think that this lady has been sick. I don't know what happened, God. But I just pray for this family. I pray for all families that have lost loved ones. And I just pray, God, that no one dies through these cold days and nights. God, I just pray that you would be with them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So my friends, my hip is hurting. I don't think this chair is uh, helps my hip much. It hasn't always been very comfortable. Let me swap it with my other one that I had in here. It was pretty comfortable. Okay, so let's talk about cats. So what path are you on today? Are you on the narrow path with Jesus? Or are you on the wide path with the world? Because there are only two paths. There is not a path in the middle. Um, 
there is only two. The narrow one and the wide one. And that's it. That's it. Well, let's... Excuse me. I'm a hot chocolate. Hey! How are you doing? Is that Monica? I can't... All I have is a teeny tiny picture. Hey, Monica, is that you? It looks like you're... Oh, she's gone. Alright, love you too, Monica. She didn't stay. Okay. So, um... Paths. We all take them. Sometimes we're on the wrong ones. I've had times in my life when I was on the wrong path. Are you on the right path today? Um... If the gate is narrow, the path will be also. So let's read Matthew 7, 13 through 14. And that's going to be the first scripture that we discuss. Sorry, now my nose itches. You know, this has been quite some year for us because we all had COVID last last month. And this month we've got this cold, cold, cold weather that I've never experienced before. So I wonder what next month is going to hold. Who knows? All right. Uh, Matthew seven thirteen through 14 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So that's Jesus himself saying that. So, um, so we are to enter in the narrow gate not the wide one. Sometimes we have to separate ourselves from the people that are headed to the wide gate that leads to destruction. God wakes me up sometimes early in the quiet in my house so He through the Holy Spirit can share these messages with me so I in turn will share them with others. This is my calling in my life right now and I'm very passionate about it. My word for 20... 19 is humble obedience and trust well my words for 2021 are presence being in the presence of god testify testifying of the things that he's done in my life and encourage encourage others so those are my three words for 2021 so when you make this declaration every day, it becomes a challenge because Satan does not want us to be successful with furthering the kingdom of God. This message was written with our jail ministry ladies in mind and had been directed to you personally. God wants you to know that his love for you never changes, no matter what you have done or will do in the future. And um, also I shared this song with them, um, Never Once by Matt Redman. And so it says, Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Standing on this mountaintop, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us. Kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes our hearts can say, never once did we ever walk alone, never once did you leave us on our own, you are faithful, God you are faithful. I'm not going to sing it to you. But the lyrics, the lyrics and music, just, I really connect with them. And so this song is the song that God 
brought to my mind that morning that I wrote this. I must have gotten up really early and wrote it. Oh, yeah, I wrote it at 3.03 .03 in the morning. That was plenty early. That was very early. Okay, so let's move on. The P, the P to pass equals plan and purpose. Are you on a path that lines up with God's plan and purpose for your life? If not, can you remember the day that you got off this path and started going against the plan and purpose of God? It is never too late to get back on this path. God has a plan and purpose for each life here He created. God created us with His characteristics to help us with His plan and purpose. So let's read Psalm 139, 1 through 6. That'd be nice if I... I used to uh, mark these, but I got really lazy and I quit doing that. Okay, 139, 1 through 6 says this. O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassed, compassed my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O, o Lord, Thou knowest it all together. Thou hast Beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. So, you know, God, God knows what He wants. He knows what path He wants us to go down. He has chosen us. We are His chosen, that He chose. He chose us for the plan and purpose that He has. So, the heading on my study Bible says, God's perfect knowledge of man. He knows our thoughts, where we are at all times, what we say and what we think. Nothing can be hidden from Almighty God. This is great news. He loves you and always has loved you. He wants to do amazing things through you. Do you believe this is possible? It is very possible, not on our own, but through God, all things are possible. <laughs> Excuse me, are possible. The plan and purpose God has for you is individual and unique. If you stay on this narrow path, God will order your steps for His plan and purpose. It is your job to trust Him in this process. It is not easy, but your blessings will be many for many generations. It is no mistake that you have been brought here today. He asked me to write this message for you. So P is plan and purpose. God has a plan and purpose for all of us. All of us. Everyone. Everyone He created, He has a plan and purpose for and His love is tremendous for everyone that He created. That's everybody, even the people that don't love Him, even the people that do not follow Him, even the people that do not even believe in Him. He loves them. Okay, so let's go to A. Let's talk about A. Appointed and anointed. In the path that you are on, is the path that you are on appointed and anointed by God? And so let's read Matthew twenty eight sixteen. I'm so glad I have somebody that I can share my messages with that God helped me write through the Holy Spirit. I'm not the best writer. And I do my phrases a little bit backwards sometimes. But I do like to write. I really do. 
Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. So Jesus appointed them where to go. Jesus chose his apostles. And Jesus anointed his apostles. Jesus appointed his apostles to fulfill their plan and purpose from God. And he appointed them to a certain mountain that he wanted them to go to receive the Great Commission. This is where Jesus told them about the Great Commission. And this is where he really commissioned them, which was their anointing. Because that is um, where he told them what they needed to do. Uh, do you feel like God has appointed you to do something for him to further his kingdom? The apostles were all appointed and carried out what God wanted them to do to further his kingdom and church. God will appoint us to do things for him. You need to learn to say, yes, my heavenly father. Believe me, arguing is a waste of time. I have been appointed to jail ministry and evangelism. My heart wants to go to heaven and no one to be left behind for the tribulation. My soul is very burdened by the things that I hear and see now. Tribulation and hell are real and are not going to be a party. It is going to be the darkest days ever with a separation from your Creator God. Since the Holy Spirit lives in us, it will leave when we do. The restrainer of evil will be gone in a twinkling of an eye during the rapture. And God also anoints us. So let's read Second uh, Corinthians. Second Corinthians, I think, or it may be first. I think I typed first, but then I wrote second on top. One twenty for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us, is God, who hath also sealed us, and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Well, I added that because I, I liked it. When I looked down there and read it, I liked it. I do that sometimes. So God anoints you for your path. Do you feel this anointing? You have to ask to be used and willing, and willing to be used to receive your anointing. We are all called to work to further his kingdom until Jesus comes back to get his church. We are to be praying and watching for him to come every day. So let's talk about T. So T for uh, paths stands for truth. Is the path that you are on grounded on the truth of God's word? Make sure it is by reading your Bible daily and communicating through prayer. So let's read 3 John 1, 2 through 3. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. So make, if your path is not grounded by the truth in the Bible, it is grounded on a lie. Do not buy into the lies from Satan that goes against the truth. Do all that you say and do grounded on the truth of God's words. In other words, don't just say it, but do it. Walk the walk and talk the talk of a follower of the truth of God's word. The path grounded in truth is narrow and sometimes lonely. 
but Jesus promised that he will never leave you or forsake you. No matter if you are just moving a half an inch at a time, keep moving forward with Jesus. Do not turn back to what you know. Just move forward. So just stay on this path with Jesus and stay grounded in the truth and just keep moving forward. Sometimes we're just inching along, but if we are moving with Jesus, that is what God wants for us. He wants us to move forward with Jesus. He doesn't want us to go back to the past. He wants us to keep moving forward, to stay in the present, not to worry about the future either because we don't control that. Just to stay in the present and keep moving. I'm sorry. I talk with my hands. Well, I'm not sorry. God created me like this. I don't know. Okay. H. So let's talk about H. H is heart of God. Is your path leading you to the heart of God? So let's read uh, 15, 11 through 32 in Luke. And this is the story of the prodigal son, which is one of my favorite stories. And if I can put it in a lesson, it usually ends up in a lesson because I think it just shows God's heart so clearly. It shows God's love so clearly and God's forgiveness so clearly. And so I think that's why I like it so well. Okay. So let's read it. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after... The younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will rise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants, and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured the living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And this is what the father said to the son. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. 
and that I have is thine. It was meet, and we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. So every time that someone gets saved that's lost, there is a celebration. The angels rejoice. So this father thought his son was dead and he rejoiced. So this is the story of the prodigal son. I have read it many times. We all stray off the narrow path from time to time. We think, hey God, I can handle this thing called life. I want to do it my way, just like the prodigal son. Things are going great. God, see you in heaven. What I love about this story is the father. The father, God's heart, is so big and so full of love that no matter what we do, no matter what we feel, he will always run to you each time. God himself celebrates when a sinner comes from the wilderness back in his arms. You just have to call upon his name and get back on the narrow path. There are so many people that are like this prodigal son that have stepped away from God. God did not step away from them. They stepped away from him. But it is so easy for them to come back if they just will. A lot of them feel like, though, that they're not worthy. Well, none of us are worthy. Absolutely none of us are worthy of um, the grace, the, the eternal gift that we've been given through Jesus. None of us are worthy for that. Absolutely none of us. And so please, if this is you and you're this prodigal son or daughter, please come back to God. Time is running out and you need to repent and return to God. He is waiting for you. He is he did not leave. He did not leave. He is right where you left him. Okay, I just felt like I needed to say that for somebody. I don't know. That wasn't even in my lesson. That was just a that happens sometimes. Okay, so let's talk about S. S is the last, and it is for the shepherd. And Jesus is that shepherd. So let's read Psalm 23, which is, again, one of my favorites. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So is your path with the shepherd. Sometimes your path is in the valley with Jesus, which is a very painful place to be. He tends to you there and takes care of you, protects you, guides you, and you draw closer to him in the valley. Sometimes because he loves you so much, he will pick you up and carry you. He is always with you on the path and will never leave you. He walks you up the huge mountain in front of you, and when you get to the top, he rejoices with you. He is the good shepherd, and when you are on the narrow path with him, everything will not be perfect, but so much better. It's not gonna be perfect. We're gonna go through things. We're gonna be in valleys. We're gonna be on mountains. We're gonna be in between valleys and mountains, but Jesus is always there. He's always going to be there with us. 
So I guess this is my conclusion. Jesus' plan and purpose was to be our last blood sacrifice to carry our sin and shame on the cross. He laid down his life for us to offer us salvation. He was buried in a tomb that was not even his own. He was raised to life on the third day, and he ascended back to heaven to the right-hand side of his Father. He continues to be the only Savior for the entire world that offers eternal life to all. Jesus was appointed and anointed by God for this path and was prophesied throughout the Old Testament of his coming. Jesus' life was grounded in the truth of God's word. <clears throat> Jesus left us the best example of love, compassion, forgiveness, selflessness, healing, obedience, faithfulness, and humility. Jesus is still the only path to heaven and the heart of God. Jesus' life leads to the heart of God. He is a part of the Trinity, and He was God in the flesh. He was obedient, sinless, and faithful in everything He was called upon to do by His Father. Jesus is still our daily shepherd that loves and cares for us deeply. Our shepherd is coming back to get us and we will have glorified, spiritual, perfect bodies for all eternity. I have some friends that already have that. And I'm so happy for them, but I really miss them too. There will be no sadness, no illness, no finance problems, no worries, no separation, but we will be surrounded by the light and love of Jesus for all eternity. So what path do you find yourself on? Is it the narrow path that leads to the narrow gate? If you are not, it is not too late to call upon the name of Jesus and be saved. Was there a day that you asked Jesus into your heart and humbled yourself before him to ask for forgiveness? This is so important, and it is the most important decision of your life. This is the only decision that determines where your soul will spend eternity. I unashamedly will ask every time I come, because I want to make sure that everyone gets this opportunity. This is something I was asked to add to this message today. It might not be for you, but maybe will help you lead someone to salvation. There is no set prayer for salvation, but this is a guideline for you. So this is a salvation prayer. So if you have been sitting here and you have been listening and you've been going, Wow, I'm on the wrong path. I am on the wrong path. I have never asked Jesus to be my Savior. Then today is your opportunity. If you've stepped away from God, it is so easy to repent. Just say, I am so sorry, God. I am so sorry. I love you. I want to do what's right. He will be right there. But if you have never asked Jesus to be your Savior, then I'm going to say this prayer. And this is just a simple ABC prayer. Admit, believe, confess. And uh, I'm going to give some space so that you can repeat it after me. And, uh, sorry, I need a drink. Hot chocolate made me thirsty. Okay. So I'm going to say this, and um, I'll give you space to repeat after me if you would like to. And if you're already saved, then share this with somebody. Share this message with somebody. Alright. Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you, Jesus, are God's one and only Son that came to teach, heal, love, and forgive. You selflessly died a cruel death on the cross for all sinners and for me personally.
You were buried in a tomb and rose to life on the third day. You ascended into heaven to be on the right hand side of God the Father and you are coming back to usher your church into heaven. I invite you Jesus into my heart as my Savior and Lord of my life. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Please give me the strength to withstand temptations in my life and help me to praise and glorify you daily. Help me to grow in my relationship with you daily, Jesus, through Bible study and prayer. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. So if you said this prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing. God's rejoicing. If you decided to come back to God as a prodigal child, He will rejoice. If you accepted Jesus as your Savior, then the, your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, His Son. So I'm going to write this date down that I repeated this lesson. What is today? The 16th. Okay. All right. Well, that was my lesson. If you have any comments, if you have any scriptures that you think would have gone great with this, then please put them in the comments. Let me know if you came and visited and watched it by putting your name in. You don't have to do a thumbs up. I don't care. I'm doing what I feel like God's called me to do. So, I don't need anyone's approval, I just need His approval, because He is who I'll stand in front of one day. Okay, so this was my conversation with God today, my quiet time. And, uh, I put morning, but it might have been afternoon, I don't know, I didn't sleep well last night, so it was had a late morning and I don't know these last two days have been really weird I guess just because the extreme cold I know many people are without electricity um, we haven't lost ours yet but I'm prepared if we do I've got everything backed up I have extra batteries and and stuff but I worry about more about the cold than the being able to see with lights. You know, I think cold is more of a worry. Okay, good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you another new day of mercies and blessings. New opportunities to share my truth in the gospel of Jesus. Another new day, child. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings. New opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for another day. Help me to prepare for no electricity. Thank you for power. 
please restore to others the power that they need. Help us to rely on you, God, and not our government. And he said, Child, many will come to me through disaster. So planned by me or not, many need to come because time is running out. And I know who must come, who needs to return also. I see and hear all, child, in this world is mostly evil, following false gods, not believing in me while I love them and always have. I want none to perish, and that is why I sent Jesus to die for all, to offer salvation for all. No one is left out, but they have free will to choose. The wide path looks more inviting, but it leads to destruction and um, hmm, damnation. I couldn't read my handwriting. Eventually, people have to choose which path to, tra to travel. One lead to me, the other leads to hell, and there is no middle path. That's what I was saying earlier. There is no middle path. It's either going to go the wide path with the world or are you going to go the narrow path with Jesus I see all that you're saying very clearly God I will speak about the two paths tonight I see this in your word and I see people every day on the wrong path especially our younger generations Help me to share your truth, God, and the gospel of Jesus to everyone. Thank you for meeting me today, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, child. Now go be obedient to me and continue to share, child. Time is very short and many need to come to Jesus for salvation. The reunion is soon, child, so be ready at all times. It will be so glorious to see you all again. And I said, Maranatha, God, I'm ready. Okay, so this little thing that I have down here on my camera has all these roads. And then it has lights, too, which is really kind of strange. And um, there's lots of paths on here. Um, so I kind of chose that as a boundary because, um, kind of as a frame, because I couldn't find anything else. I nearly put beach balls, but I decided, well, this kind of works better. But, uh, please get, if you're not on the path with Jesus, please get on the path with Jesus. Because it is so important. It is just so, so important. And, uh, I think that's all I came to do tonight. I did a lesson, did a prayer. I still want to do this. Don't think that I've forgotten about this. I still want to do this. I haven't quite decided how I want to do it. I want to do it to where it is an, um, kind of a virtual learning. I want to be able to see people. I want people to be able to talk back to me. Um, unlike, unlike this, where I'm talking the whole time. I want to be able to do this. Beautiful you inside and out. And I think I can do it on Messenger. Uh, Josie and I tried to do Messenger the other night. I think I can do it like that. Um, I just don't know when <laughs> I don't know when I'm thinking maybe March I was thinking this month but here we are we are already um, halfway through February and February short and so I'm thinking maybe March maybe this will be a spring thing it has butterflies maybe it will be a spring thing let me know in the comments what you think I know I've invited several people. I was going to do it as a Sunday school class at my church, but that hasn't worked out either, so 
and maybe I'm not meant to do it until spring since it has butterflies on it. I don't know. I never even turned my music on tonight, so just done all this with <laughs> no music. But that's okay. That's all good. Uh, sometimes I forget. So let's read the blessing from God. We all need a blessing from God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We all need peace. Some people would just like to have electricity. Excuse me again. I burped. And I would love for them to have it too because it is so cold. I don't know how cold it is right now. I know the sun didn't come out today. Maybe the sun will come out tomorrow. Yesterday was warmer because like the temperature wasn't warmer but just the fact that the sun was out was melting the snow. So, okay. Let's pray. My friend Josie didn't come. I know that they're having trouble with electricity and water and everything. So I want to lift up people about that because that's very important. And there are people all over our state and like I said, other states too, that just I don't really know who these people are that are in charge and how they got in charge. I've never heard of them. I'm going to look on my electric bill and see if we pay them something. But I really think, you know, like I said at the beginning, I think it's just that we are not used to... Um, We aren't used to this weather. It's not our normal weather that we have. So, um, I don't really see it as a failure as much as we're probably just not prepared for this kind of weather. It's just extreme. It's extreme cold. That we're not, like I said, I'm 60. I've never seen weather like this before. I don't have anything to compare it to. It's kind of like when we went through COVID, you know, when that first started, some of the youth would look to us like, you know, you're older. Have you been, you know, no. Haven't been through anything like that ever. There's just a lot of things that even us older people have never experienced before that are happening the past two years. But there's one thing that I know that I don't doubt, and that is that God is in control. And God is going to protect us as His children. And, he, and if we stay on that narrow path with Him, then it may not always be perfect, but we're not going to be alone. We're going to have Jesus with us. So by all means, let's stay on that narrow path. All right, well, let us pray. I need to go feed my child. God, we just come to you. And God, we just lift up all these people to you that do not have electricity. They do not have feet right now, God. Please let them find some place where they can go, where they can have heat where they can have hot food, where their needs will be met, God. Just help us as Christians to meet their needs. God, we just pray. We pray for the sick people. We just pray, God, that they will not get too cold. I know Ricky got too cold yesterday. I just pray, God, that you would help him with his cough. God, we just want to stay on this narrow path with Jesus. Help us 
to stay on this narrow path. Help us to keep moving forward with Jesus, even if it is just an inch at a time, God. I pray for my friend Josie. I just pray, God, that you would heal her body. She is in the midst of all this. She is not feeling well, God, so I just pray for her. I pray, God, that you would um, just be with people and that they would feel your presence during this time. God, I pray for unity, but it only comes through Jesus. So unless we are all reaching out to Jesus and we are all moving with Jesus, it is so hard. It is so hard. But God, you are the God of the impossible. So God, I just pray that you, you draw these to you that are on the wrong path, God. That you show them that you are real and that you love them God and that you have an awesome plan and purpose for their lives God and all they need to do is let go of the world and take your hand and be saved through Jesus and that you have a plan and a purpose for them God, I just pray that you would help me to be more in your presence. That you would help me to testify about the great things that you've done in my life. All the faithful, the faithfulness that you have shown me, God. And help me to encourage others with my testimony. God, I just pray that... Um, there would be a way that we can reach out to people and just show me the way. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, I also want to pray, God, for people that are sick that I know. I just lift them up to you, God. I just pray that you would heal their bodies. I pray for people that have lost loved ones, just like Pastor Tim. Not the Pastor Tim that everybody else knows that I know. Just don't everybody get it's, it's the Pastor Tim that I listen to on YouTube, God. And that one that just lost his wife that he called the most beautiful bride in all the land. That, that she is with you today, God. Just please give him and his family peace, comfort, and strength. And all the others, too, that have lost loved ones, God. Just Please give them comfort and peace and strength and let them feel your presence. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I know another pastor, Tim, and it's, just, it's different, okay? Don't everybody that I know be freaking out. It's, uh, his name is uh, Henderson, Pastor Tim Henderson. And I listen to him on YouTube. And his wife just suddenly passed away and it just, it made me so sad. I don't know what happened. God does. You know, we have we have a dash, which is our life. God is in control of our arrival date, and God is in control of our departure date. And what happens in between is our dash, and what we do with it matters to God. God wants us to use it. He has a plan and a purpose, just like this. He wants us to stay on that narrow path and to help further uh, his kingdom, to help grow his kingdom. That's, that's what he wants us to do. He wants our love. He wants our faithfulness. He wants, he wants us to be obedient to him. And that's why I get on here. It's because he has called me to this. And uh, this isn't anything that I chose. It's not, because it, this is not my comfort zone. I do, I'm not real afraid to do public speaking, I guess, because I speak a lot of different, I'm reading something, sorry. <laughs> something flashed up on my phone, I started reading it. Okay, well friends, pray and share warriors. God bless you all. Stay warm. I pray for warmth. I pray for electricity. 
God only knows where all this is going to go. I know we were told it was going to be a cold, dark winter, and I wonder how they knew. I really do. But I'm not going to say that much on here, because I don't want to get struck. And because the freedoms that we used to have, we don't quite have anymore. And I'm not going to say much about that either. But anyone that comes here that knows me, they know how I feel about these things. So, God bless you all. Have an awesome rest of your night. And have an awesome tomorrow. And please stay warm. Please stay warm. We have electricity right now. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. But God knows. So that's who I trust. Fully and totally. I'm burping hot chocolate again. Alright. Excuse me for that. And good night.